up, man. Bag of mushrooms, probably, to start off with. Yeah. Honestly, man, I, I, I will listen to Rose Easter Rose, but, like, and I, I didn't really go into it too much, but I mentioned it on this one. It's psychedelics, man. It just completely changed the way that I think about so many things. Um, this is already going. Yeah. So we just do, you want to, do you want to start properly, or...? Yeah, let's start properly and yeah. then just carry on with yeah. psychedelics. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Jump straight back in. Yeah. Jump straight back into it. Yeah. I'm not even. I'm gonna do an intro now. And it's yeah. still gonna be recording. I'm not gonna edit this out. Yeah, I'm just cool. gonna start with that psychedelics thing, and we'll just carry on. Yeah, go for it. Hey guys, we're here, at OJ Health Radio, with two guys I've known for a hell of a long while, but only reconnected recently and doing some awesome things. Tom Dole and Remy Coggill. Thanks for joining us here. Now, what were we talking about? Psychedelics. And you were going into one? No, no, it's just, um, I only started, like, last year, um, I went to an ayahuasca retreat. Obviously, a lot of people heard of ayahuasca and stuff. Um, so, yeah, to be fair, I've done it in the UK. Um, and, yeah, it just, it, just, mate, it just completely changed my view on so many things. Literally, that week after that, I was like, I sold my watch. And that was, like, my thing. Do you know what I mean? I was like, why do I need these material the things? One, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like all these different things yeah just completely change it for me it strips like all those come on there geezer come on all those sort of like societal preconceptions of like why we do things he starts to question everything so actually why do we do that why do we do it like that and then I think in business it's been good as well because we're trying to come from a or bring a bit, bit of a different vibe to the to the industry and that mentality of like well actually why do you do it like this why don't you do it like this i think it's helped our brand like just like say they are we've done the intro what, what is it you guys are actually doing property development essentially i mean we we've both come from the property um, sector but um you know from two different sides remy's been more involved with the construction side my side Dexter. was always in the kind of um, joint venture kind of structuring, pulling jobs and opportunities together and running those deals. So we've we've done a number of different types of, of projects and now we're kind of forging our path through with our experiences on both sides so that we can, you know, we want to go and experience sustainable developments. We want to kind of, you know, get involved with how we can make some of the construction methods better. For the people listening on audio only, there is a dog in the room. <laughs> That wasn't like Remy or Tom yeah. just making random noises. Yeah, <laughs> he's alright. So, you guys had both been doing development beforehand before you joined forces. Yeah. What made you join forces? Well, we saw each other at a networking event, didn't we? Yep. And then um, went for a coffee. Like I think that week or the week after, something like that. Just, I think we're but fairly aligned in, in regards to like it, it was the right time really wasn't it because yeah, both, both of us both really of us. were looking for the same thing but from different sides I was looking for the next kind of joint venture partner to kind of work with to build out the next project Ren was looking for your next project really weren't you yeah. so we both sat and chatted about how we'd like to approach things what we saw is the future and some of the challenges in the industry as it stands. And actually, we kind of figured if we got our heads together, we could we could, yeah. could go at changing some of the you know preconceptions, maybe how people see property and operate in it. And actually, we've got a good enough amount of uh, experience to put our own spin on things. Do you know what I find quite interesting? Like when people talk about business partners, like it's, it's always like it's all very much like oh be careful who you jump into bed with you need to get to know them six or seven times you need to do this you need to do that and it was like actually do you know what I think there's there's so much more of a human element behind certain things yeah I mean we knew each other yeah. from years ago yeah, yeah. but but that aside it's just like things just felt right that two parts of the puzzle kind of like well my shortcomings are where Tom picks up some slack and vice versa and and yeah seems to be going well so far we're growing quite quickly um, and got a lot of uh, ambition so to speak so is there certain tasks which you guys excel at that would make you work well as a team I think we're a team that is prepared to let each other like explore things so I think we work well as a team because if you're thinking about something you wouldn't I don't, I don't think you would think twice about coming and speaking to me about it and the same both ways so if I think oh what about the numbers on this or what about we do it this way I wouldn't feel like I couldn't come and 
raise that and have a chat with you openly about it. Yeah. I think that there's no, there doesn't seem like there's any ego really in the room. So it means that us being able to talk about whether it's how we approach a, a property or a project or, or what we think of a meeting we've just been in or perhaps the feedback once we've done something, it's, there doesn't seem to be any... Yeah, and I think actually a good point on that, so like my my role, my, we, we have kind of separate roles that help, which are great, but also, so for example, one project we got on the market um, and we had some feedback and me being like the build side of the business, I'm happy to hear any feedback. It's not like yeah. I'm like pr- protective of that or, or like I don't have that e- e- ego about it. It's and like that. Sounds as man made, like oh, Well, yeah, it. yeah, let's not go there. But um, <laughs> that's another story. But yeah, um, that, that I, I don't have that. And, and similarly, like, I think we've learned that we should have gave you more time to look for the next thing, for example. And it's not like an ego thing. It's like we're both not telling each other, but we both know we both yeah. know certain shortcomings in each other <coughs> and like things we need to do better and it's just like there's no yeah well like, I think the I, can't, I think it's Simon Sinek one of those guys who was talking about leadership and he was saying that the best leaders generally create an atmosphere that's a platform that there's there's nobody who's uh, who's the kind of boss it's like you've got to create an environment so that everybody can find their own ways of doing their their, their jobs and operating and I think that we're still we're still growing as a business and we're trying different things so then naturally there's going to be a lot of questions asked about how things are happening why is it why do we do that why don't we do that so that kind of approach that we both have we're both open-minded we both will look at things and go do you know what yeah and then on reflection i don't think either of us judge ourselves too heavily on the feedback or the challenges that might come back so that creates i think a good space for us to both work together that's that's yeah, I mean. and you know, you know what it is. So we both just want to be better. Yeah, yeah. It's all, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's what it is. Yeah. That mentality of like, I know I'm like, I'm young. We're both young. We're both relatively new in regards to a lot of other people. It's like, we know we're not perfect, but we, we just want to be better. So yeah. yeah. When did they actually like that switch? So if you think of like the younger Tom, the younger Rem, like you probably had more of an ego from the outside <laughs> uh, Come on, mate. Actually, when, when, when would that switch like, like, as a backstory, we all went to school together like, I was a year below well? I was a year below like, were you first side or was it just Helton that we no I was Kinsale, was Kinsale. Kinsale. You, so we were middle school yeah, yeah I remember like years ago when it was like you lived like before Middleton Lane area to so Fiddlewood Crowe Road uh, f- yeah, Crow Road, Road Fiddlewood, Fiddlewood, yeah. Fiddlewood mate it's like yeah. 20 odd 25 years it's ago crazy, mate. Yeah. yeah yeah it's crazy Badlands Oh, yeah. it's from the ghetto mate <laughs> yeah come on start from the bottom you know <laughs> so like, yeah, we're, we're talking yeah. what so we're in 30s now you're the youngster yeah i'm 32 33 this month man yeah, you, you're the young one in the year yeah yeah so we, we go back years that's like middle school and so you're going to tell everyone how much money go at prick i was, when I was yeah, then, like egotistical prick. <laughs> And now he's yeah, gone fair. complete U-turn. Fair, yeah. I won't fair. even use those words. So yeah. You said that, but yeah, cool, it, it was it's like cool. fair. ego side of things and like selling things all the time. Yeah, I was always a bit of a. I was, you find I was opportunities. Like, it weren't necessarily the Dell boy, weren't I? I'd sort of buy and sell anything, mate. Um, yeah, yeah. That was but when was, was that doing. time? Like, and what made that switch to? Do you know the what? Ego side. I mean, it's going to sound like we're married almost, but like when when I met Tom. Although I'm not, I'm not a prof- what you'd call a professional person. But now I like I've now understood I need to step up my persona from that perspective. Yeah. But at the same time, keep it authentic. Like I don't, I have a decent vocabulary, but I'm not a posh person. I'll never turn up in a in a suit, no matter who we're meeting. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm uh, so there's they. But at the same time, you got to. I think you say this quite. You got to take yourself seriously. For others to take you seriously so I think before that I was very much just like yeah I'll, I'll wheel and deal my way through I'm a bit of a lad do you know what I mean and then it was like once we started to take this a bit more seriously it's like look what we can achieve in the last year yeah. it's just unheard of and then it's like right yeah we better take so, so I think yeah for me it was pretty much once we started to actually yeah. go forward did you ever seem to switch ego wise or not so I, I think like from my memories, it was always just like a laid back. Yeah, I think that's always been my approach, and it, 
it's probably never it probably hasn't paid me as well in fact it's one thing I've recognised recently I've, I kind of questioned a lot which is why this kind of working relationship has been so useful because it has made both I think both of us think about how we approach things mm. and I was thinking do you know what I am quite I'm quite comfortable being very relaxed very chilled out about it you know I've tried to hold a kind of you know just be be fair and you know equitable and make sure things you know are all right you don't leave anybody kind of um you know left out or you don't screw anyone over and stuff like that but you know and i i kind of thought that challenge of the hard-nosed businessman you know the asshole that guy you know that doesn't work because i didn't ever think i'd have the characteristics to be like that so i kind of thought oh, i'm gonna have to accept that i'm always going to be a little bit um you know behind because i'm not i haven't got those cutthroat sort of horrible kind of tactics Whereas I don't actually think you need to, and now I'm starting to think actually, if you just do the right things, associate with the right people, you know, and you've got a bit more confidence to kind of think actually what I'm doing and how I'm going to practice things is the way that I want to be kind of remembered or the way I want to, to hold things. It's okay to be, you know, you don't, you don't have to be conflicting with everyone, but it's okay to go, no, that's not going to work or that's not going to be something we go for, that we're going to do it this way. Like acting um, on integrity. Yeah, I think so, and that 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 means a lot. And I think once you know when the dust settles from everything that's going on at the minute, you know, if people with integrity and people who are going to do what they say they're going to do and, and deliver will be the ones that have got some you know space left in the world to to work it. And I think that's going to prove our you know, business to be where we can grow. I really do. So you've got like big like depths of confidence in what you do and confidence in yourself, which you had to build up. Yeah, but. but some people think ego when we think confidence and I've, I've noticed myself like I'm super confident now in what I do and the goals of wanting to change people's lives and everything like that but only even like 10 years ago it would have been egotistical to say um, like, no one can do what I do as good as I do it yeah so I think we spoke <clears throat> earlier let's go into a little bit about what you do for like from our perspective you asked me the other day, didn't you? And I was like, actually, I don't know exactly what you do. So well, yeah, and I yeah. was having this conversation. Like a client just signed up now, and she was like, "Well, well my husband isn't really going to agree with this." Like, well, why are you signing up to me? And it was to really improve her health. Her hormones have been messed around a little bit from having three kids. So we're going to focus on sorting her hormones out, some health issues out, and this has been a journey myself as well from the bodybuilding Ollie competing on stage, literally like. My first show was actually two, 10th of August 2008. That's that's crazy, that no is. No way. Yeah. So, <laughs> no way. Um, so 2008? Yeah, 12 years ago what? today was my first show. That's, and, um, that's insane. Mate, and that's insane. My last one was 2012, so I've done like seven shows in that time. And she was a client previously, which was a prep client. So we were just saying, eat this, train this way. What, and prep we'll, for shows? Yeah, prep for a, a yeah. figure show, or whatever it was that she was doing. And now what I'm doing is far from that. And it's far from the personal training side. Some people will get that in there. They'll get a training plan and like working with like pro endurance athletes, a guy in the Tour de France before, um, consulted in go or the cyclist in um, Rio 2016. And working with those guys, it was going A to B as fast as possible about worrying about health. Yeah. Uh, but using the story of what happened with my dad when I was 15, of like him dying of a stroke, it was just, well, he was a guy that was managing holiday parks and everything that was stress essentially that killed him that there's people building businesses and they are stressed out crazily yeah so we're going into genetics that was spoke about a lot where yeah. you can have impairments in your genes which when you're a kid and like that you're born with these impairments but then our lifestyle makes them worse makes them better but we can also dirty up our genes as well as we go through life and we get too stressed and that's when it comes in where we see people saying calories in versus calories out there's a lot more to health than that like the equation mathematical equation is like you spend more than you earn you're going to be getting in debt yeah. and this should be like that with calories in calories out with weight loss but when we have energy in there sleep inflammation all this sort of stuff so what i'm doing is building up a plan with those sorts of things with clients to actually literally change their lives yeah so i've got people like that had epilepsy or has it have epilepsy now managing chronic migraines PTSD loads of problems that have they've been going through and then guys that are running like seven eight figure businesses that like 
they've stressed themselves out to get there. Yeah. And eventually, you know, what I find a lot of people, and you guys might see this as well, like with yourselves, I don't know, but if you're working and working and working and working, you stay, your body stays together. When you stop, is when you, is when you break. Yeah. So I was speaking to someone that we both know and um, she just been on holiday and then she was saying that she got sick when she, or she was just knackered, like literally tired out of the first few days of holiday. Yeah. Um, and you see people get sick in the holiday season and stuff. So like from Thanksgiving to Christmas, like all that time, because they've just been go, go, go all the time. When the, the body's Thanksgiving? Together. I don't even know. What's that? When's Thanksgiving? Last Thursday in November. Right. Okay. Holiday season. I did know. I work with you're way more. You're way more upon yeah. side than me, yeah. So. Um, yeah, so that, that was kind of, we're building habits and then looking into genetics, looking yeah. into deeper like functional medicine and stuff like that, um, which when people see that in the business and the difference that it makes, yeah. the problem is, is what, like feeling good isn't normal. Yeah. And or well, feeling good should be normal, but it's not common. Sorry, no, because people don't know what it's like when we actually feel good. And people make so many. I saw a thing the other day. It was like this joke video, and it was like, what was it? But barbecues when you're over thirty or something, and they're sitting there, and he's like struggling to get up to get the beer yeah, and stuff. Make like, a joke and about it, like a joke about really it, should like have thirty. Been. Like what? <laughs> but similar to what you were saying, obviously we we haven't worked together or anything, but like we. I've, I've not been so much recently but like we, we started running together didn't we and we that's one of the things I want to touch on yeah Yeah, there's other sides to that as well which I think we, we both sort of just have the similar mentality and we've pushed each other but doing that like so we've done an ultra I, I call it an ultra it feels like a bit of a cheap it, it ultra. was an ultra it was an ultra but oh, it's 50k so it's only 8k more than a marathon we've done that with what two weeks notice yeah. and it was like how did you run a marathon before? We ran a marathon. Well, done I London. ran a marathon. I did London. You, uh, I'd done a marathon three weeks yeah. before we done this, yeah. and that was my first marathon. And I done that on twenty four hours notice with Louis. You know, you know Louis, mate, Louis. Um, You're good to get Louis on the show as well. Yeah, he he texted me one day and was like, "Do you want to run a marathon tomorrow?" And you can ask the plumber, Josh. He was there at Thunder Lane when when he asked me. I was like, "Oh fuck, so I've got to run a marathon tomorrow." <laughs> he said, "What do you mean?" I was like, "Well, he's asking me. I can't say no, can I?" So I ended up running the marathon. You could say no, but with your ego. Nah, though, mate. Yeah. Nah, it's, it's not just ego. It's just development. But from that ultra, me and Tom, we both said, we were like, mate, if we can just do this, what the fuck else can we do? What can we do in business? Like, what um, are we? Yeah. So there's that mentality behind all that health benefit fits and stuff like that, for sure, yeah. We're having that conversation as well yesterday because we're, we're doing another business venture as well. We were on a plot for that yesterday and uh, talking about the people that, we're hanging around with it's that I want to get here okay how do we get there yeah not but this is going to happen and that's going to happen and that's going to get in the way it's like let's find a way to get there okay, and then. like it's finding a way to do that yeah like, and your let's say like business acumen as such or yeah. attitude as such um, I mean, attitude I wouldn't say yeah. acumen I'm not, a, like, I'm you, not you've a, got kind of things which you have to stick by when, when you're building right yeah uh, or you want to stick by what sort of things are you looking at with that in the sense of like the sustainable builds and like, obviously not every single person's going to have that if clients yeah. but um, going back sorry going back to what you were saying about like figuring out a way I think um, like almost from the beginning when we sort of first met we were like by the end of 2020 we'll have a plot for five houses yeah and like we've just talked it's, it's, it's just been said it's just been said don't know how we're going to do it but it's going to happen and we're sitting here now what are we August and it's going to happen yeah it's going to happen still do you know what I mean like and it's it's that like we said yeah it's not looking at oh how oh this could go wrong we could have this happen we could have, it's like no we'll we'll figure it out yeah and, uh, and I think yeah I, I think that's so so important so many people have great ideas but don't have the I don't know what you'd call it the 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 guts the whatever to just do it rather than think themselves out of it do you know what i mean i think it's, it's finding the opportunity in every situation one of the podcast guests matt a sales guy is talking about how his business had to go from face to face to online this like instantly like a lot of people yeah. had to yeah and but then some people will just be uh, digging their head in the sand just bury their head in the sand and then not do anything but just find that opportunity in every situation yeah. Now, has your business managed to change much during COVID, or is it just well, you were on like find the lane plot for starting I mean, right? To be honest, from from that perspective, from operations perspective, which is my side, no, 
we, we sort of just carried on. We had a few little things you had to think about, like plaster was hard to get on it, but I figured out, do you know what I mean? But from other perspectives. People's per- perception of what um, I think they value now will change. So mm-hmm. from my side, people are asking more about how they can, you know, whether they can safeguard income by investing, whether they can look at other opportunities that we might have because they want to be exposed to a different market. So people are asking those questions and then obviously the building industry really has had quite a push really you know they, they ask the government are still trying to keep that on the rails really it feels like you know with some housing changes in policy and a few other things you know they still got big targets to make they want to shake up planning systems you know people's perception of property is already headline driven all the time so if there's going to be one headline that says something happened in one part of the country for one part particular of that market yep. it's a just broad brush across everything so we have to just be better educating the people that are working with us about Norfolk how that operates what it means with working with us and how we, we intend to kind of overcome some of the challenges but I think it's just keeping everybody sort of getting ahead of, of of what perhaps I think they're going to be thinking about when it comes to what I do with their money. Uh, is it secure with banks? Does it mean that it's better off that we, you know, we, we look at working with people who want to uh, engage with young guys that want to get in and you know get their hands dirty? Really, I think that's what it comes down to. I mean, you already talked about how we can like communicate with our investors. Basically, it's like showing every scenario what could possibly happen. Isn't it? Like, yeah, there's no, um, it's never risk free. Nothing is, but no. I think the best case we can do is try to build a new kind of COVID plan around how we communicate what our facts and figures are you know if there's scenario ABC before this where um, you might have maybe an upper limit a middle and a low and that's based on some comparables you'll have now three of those plus a COVID plan that might, that might <laughs> yeah, include fucking world <laughs> post-apocalyptic <laughs> house prices and, it, and it's it's interesting because people will People will ask about it, and I don't think they really know what the answer will be because they'll ask me. I've had a couple of conversations where they'll say, "Oh, what do you do if if you know if it happens again?" It's like, okay, well, what do you want to do? Because if, you know, most of the time, it's a reflection of really what they are feeling. So if they feel like if it's going to crash and it's going to do this and it's going to do that, and I'm going to lose money anyway, well, are you better off to be in you know two or three other parts of the market, and not all in one you know one. Um, bank account or all in one particular uh, investment class or something like that so I think people are starting to get adjusted to it but um, we just have to keep doing what we're doing I think and, and show people that we 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 don't know it all nobody does but we're capable of being dynamic so quick learners man yeah I think you can definitely see that from the content you're putting out and I think the honesty in the content as well mm-hmm. that you're saying that we don't know everything but here's, this is what worked for us yeah I, I that same client earlier wants to take her business, she's in fitness as well. She wants to take her business online. And can I help her with that? And they're like, well, I know what's worked for me. Mm. And I suppose we can only put that advice out. Like, yeah. Not saying, oh yeah, you're gonna get to six figures in nine weeks or whatever. Yeah. Or, but you know, I think that's more relatable now in, in the all the industries that we're in because everybody wants to have a personal brand but most of the time it's backed on what they've told what someone else has told them they need to say yeah. whereas actually if you're happy to go look this is what worked for me and that's all i can really give you you know you can find your other experiences and you can expose yourself to maybe two or three other people and you might find that you'll piece it together that works for you but everyone's branding has got to be genuine to how they they, to how they, they, I, they know what they've done you know i think going going on from that is like helping people and stuff like we're we're putting together a little something to 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 put out there but like for me i i sat with this for a while mentally and, and on, on a more personal note is that i've got this i've got a few mantras that i have like greatness only being one of them like it's from that little skeptic clip man it's like Greatness only, greatness only, greatness only, and he's like, eventually, someone keep telling you that that'll sink in, and yeah. and and that's that's your that's your motto, that's your, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then another one is David Goggins is is uncommon uncommon amongst uncommon men. Like I, I like to think as myself, not from an egoic perspective, but as as uncommon. Like I want to do uncommon stuff. So for then to put something out there and offer help to people, I sit on this 
this this sort of scale of well if i can do it anyone can do it because i'm not special and then also on the other side it's actually i'm i'm uncommon like i am you you're not built like me i work harder than you and i do that do you know what i mean so it's that it's that it, I think it's, it's like such a your fine, ego again it's such a fine thing but not even from an egoic perspective like it's it's just just wanting to be different so, so, and I, and i think having that mindset for me personally is telling myself greatness only and uncommon it then helps me go well i can run 50k because i'm uncommon and turns out we did do you know so i think telling yourself that from one perspective not even like say not from an egoic perspective but telling yourself that, but then also saying, oh, you guys, well, we've done this, so you might be able to do this as well. It's like a hard balance to... Do you not think, though, if you've put all your information out, Mm -hmm. we had this conversation yesterday about health stuff. Yeah. If you put all your information out and everyone's got the information as a chance to do it and they don't do it, it makes you even more uncommon because you're the one that's actually acting on it. They've got that information now. There's no excuse with it. Like Every single thing I can tell someone about health... They can find on Google if they know what they're searching for, if they yeah. know how to like, get all the, the crap out there and filter that out, if they've got the time to do it, and if they they don't want to like trial and error with different stuff. Yeah. But they're paying me for accountability and to give them that right stuff that they need right now. And you putting all that information out there is going to be, oh, well, here still it is. Why don't you try and do it then? Yeah, You I think suppose. you can? Yeah, yeah. So there's still an opportunity for them to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, it looks out like that, yeah. There, there, go. there we go, there we go. Bit of wisdom there. Yeah, wise. <laughs> a bit of wisdom. From, you're a year older than me, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, I should have known that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah. But it's in, it's interesting um, how that side of all businesses has just blown, isn't it, recently, obviously, due to what's happened. Everything's going online, so many people sharing knowledge and all that sort of stuff. Um which then, again, for another worry is that you're then just another brick in the wall, aren't you? No pun intended, but like, but that's why we're trying to do our marketing and content is to, to come across way more authentic and also... It's so crowded, what, our marketplace. It Don't is me so wrong. crowded. You, you it's know, like a modern Forex sort of thing. Yeah, it is, it? and you, you make me laugh when you say, we didn't invent property investing in, in anything like that, but yet everybody sells it. Like, it's the, their, their way of like... Mate, we're just good at branding and marketing and at the minute. You know that that's it. There's a lot of people that will do their own training, their own what how tos, whatever, whatever, whatever. There's loads of it. So the property world is is yeah, packed like, as the health yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah the health industry is another one. When you put your yeah. story out though, yeah, it gets people to know you as individuals. Yeah. I think that's the yeah. thing. That that's what's worked most for me because they connect with that. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to I do. Think really, that might is be the very way much that we're getting to know. But do you know what? I'm sort of obsessed with Fifty Cent at the minute, aren't I? But, like he says about not pretend, basically and acting as if you don't need anything, mm. but tactically acting like you don't need anything. And, and I think from a similar perspective, we're, the package we're putting together is like, here it is, if you want to buy it, if you do, if you don't, you don't. Like, doesn't really bother us, we're, yeah. we're doing this anyway, yeah. but this is a little thing. It's not like we're, like you see a lot of these guys all like, oh, do you want financial freedom? Do you want this? Blah, blah, blah. All these, and it's like, no, we're just like, look, if, if, if you want to know what we do, here it is. If you don't, jog on. Like, And I think that's that mentality as well, is that yeah. that's, it's not a core part of our business, <clears throat> just a, it's just a little learning. Like, really. like psychology side of things, like if a girl likes you or something, and you're like, yeah, okay, whatever, then they like her even more. We want what we can't have, I suppose. It's, it's that sort of stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. On that note as well, with 50 Cent, do you not think, like, get rich or die trying, just mind your skin? Still. <laughs> yeah, I had to put it on after I'd listened to some of his book. I was like, I've got to put the album back. Yeah. yeah. I, it's I'm, just I'm a gonna, key moment. Probably 16 in, then. Yeah, but yeah, so you were going skiing with a school. Yeah, yeah and, and then that was when the album had just come out. Oh, mate. Then we're, we were at the back of the bus, and it was, it was in the club. Over and over for twenty seven hours on. A How did we train. get through that? Got us through that coach trip. Easily. That song was huge, wasn't it, man? Can you remember yeah. we went to see him as well, didn't we? Yeah, anger management tour, mate. Like, Two thousand and four. Is that what it was? Yeah. Nah, sixteen years ago, man. That's crazy. This is nuts. That's mad. Like memories there. It's mad. Like, like, can you yeah, imagine being a, a teacher on a coach for of kids? It, it, but it, listening to 50, fifty cent, fifteen, sixteen year olds talking about shooting people and 20, drug dealing, twenty five, thirty hours, whatever. But yeah, That's what an album! I thought he was the baddest man on the planet. Man, he's a gangster, straight up G. He's just a, sm- he's just smart, mate. Like 
when you hear oh, just everything in it about the car, about his appearance, he doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, yeah. everything about his calculated, he's a smart... Oh, this, with the alcohol when he was like, pouring it out. I'll have yeah. ginger ale instead. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I remembered from it at the start, yeah. Because he, he wanted to be switched on, and that go, probably goes back but to his gangster days. But you wouldn't have known that if he didn't tell you. Mate, yeah. no, you'd think he'd be like on it but all the time. But now it makes me think everything I've ever heard or seen about him is tactical from his perspective. Like, I don't... Yeah, now the filter's on of, like, how, yeah, he's, how, he's, how clever he is. I'm like, well, I heard he went bankrupt. And then I'm like, I've heard... I saw nah, these no, really... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that was... It was, that was money. Was yeah. This is it. Money. And then I'm like, I saw these really wonky videos of him doing, like, piece to camera stuff. And I think it was probably it just for him. Calculated. Exactly. It just would have been some... a piece of his little jigsaw and he'd have been like... One of the bits for me that got me and I was like, do you know what? So he sort of said about how... Um, we're judged on our appearance and the things we have. And he was like, whether you like that or not, having nice things will make people think a certain way about you. It's not right. It shouldn't happen. But he said, play the fucking game. Yeah. And that's when it kicked for me. And like, one of the reasons, like, I sold my watch because I understood from an egoic perspective, I liked how people looked at me. I liked what that represents. But now I think, do you know what? I could do with one now. Now we're going to be sort of on a certain level. It's just a little thing that I can dress however I want, but I can go anywhere and people know. Do you know what I mean? And there's a bit he says, and he's like, he's got a, he said he's got a guy who's a really successful media guy or something, and if he's in a room, and if someone's got a nice watch on and he doesn't know who they are, he wants to talk to them to know what they do to see if they can do business. And, I, and it just clicked, and I was like, that's the guy I want to be. And unfortunately... Can you rap? The microphone? No. I, I, I don't know. I say no. If I wanted to rap, I could rap. 50, 50 kind of one point. Yeah. Um, I'll give I see go. exactly what you mean with that. But do you know what I mean? But, it's like, it. it's not right. And he say, and he says it as in you just got to play the game. And, and that just made it click for me. It was like, unfortunately... Maybe we do have to play the game a bit and, and dress a certain way sometimes or drive a certain car sometimes or do just just to play the game. Yeah, and that, that really I clicked think, uh, for me. It, it does. Like when, when I got my car and I thought I was getting a brand new BMW and it was going to be the car my dad had when he died. But that wasn't going to bring my dad back. There was a lot of ego in there, but you can see the difference that people look at you. Like I had a Polo, then the Audi, and then got the BMW. The difference between the three cars... Like, oh, what's he doing? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, especially when people think he's just a personal trainer. Yeah, like, and then no, oh, they're not. Who's he training? Yeah, um, but it does make a lot of difference when, like, and when I've seen it with different clients. But what was cool is when you see people know for ego, like they were, they were buying things for ego, mm. and they've had that. And I was working with a guy, um, and he was Taylor Swift, like Taylor Swift manager when Kanye jumped on stage. And I was over there in Nashville in his house, in his office. We'd done this musician's health course. There's all platinum plaques from Taylor on there. It was so like surreal. Mad, like, yeah, when mad. he when he called me up, he's like, Rick, like I'm this guy from Norwich. Like, why are you calling me up to <laughs> work on your health? Like, I know what to do, and he didn't tell me to do it. But he would just switched his car, and he's like, I'm just gonna buy this Ford, like Ford Titanium or something. And it was just fifteen dollars it took to fill the tank, like part electric car or whatever and it was just no ego in it at all and yeah but he's but at he's a place at where level. he knows yeah, his he's reputation the guy. Yeah. yeah he he's knows still, he's the guy yeah, when he exactly. walks in the room he knows he's the guy yeah. that's the difference and it's like, getting to that level that is but getting sure. there without using your ego to get there knowing why you're doing it i think uh, do so you i think ego can take over do you i think ego gets a bad rep a lot of the time though i think we all need any form of confidence is is ego whether we like it or not and like just the progression of all humanity arguably has been on, on ego. Do you know what I mean? So I think I think a lot of it gets used in a negative way. Have you seen Wayne Dyer's The Shift? No. It's shit Who's Wayne Dyer? Um, Dr. Wayne Dyer. Um, he talks about, like, it's a whole film on YouTube. It's not very good quality, the copy on there, but you watch it and then you realise it gives you this big shift and like, ego stands for like, edging God out and then bringing yourself in there instead. And mm -hmm. I think it's knowing the difference between the two. Because yeah. we do need ego at certain points because sometimes we are going to be fearful and our ego will get us to do the thing. Um, and I think 50 said in that book as well about um, when he was like sitting on top of the water. Oh, what, yeah. yeah, and he yeah. went to the edge. Yeah, yeah. 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 and like, just about fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
pretty crazy. Is there anything that you guys are fearful of, given the business you're in? Do you know what is a either personally or in business? Personally, is a is a. I'm not a huge fan of his music, to be honest. But Bugsy Malone, I, I think as a person, I, I I think it's awesome. But he says in one of it, he's done this like video. It's like this little motivational video. He talks about boxing and growing up and stuff. And, and in it, he says, "Ordinary makes me anxious." And I, I just love that. And that's one thing that through life and everything is that I just don't want to be normal. I don't want to be ordinary. I want I want to be interesting. I want to be an interesting guy. That's probably the main thing that I'm scared of is growing not old and, and just being like pretty mundane, not taking any risks, playing it safe all the time. And yeah, I mean, it works for some, but that's probably personally, yeah. Anything for you? The one, most of the ones that stand out are the usual, you know, fear of failure and doing the, the, the you know, doing the yeah, failing at achieving something. So not yeah. getting there. That's a, that's a fear that, that I ride quite um, quite a lot. But I think there's similarities there because I don't think, I don't feel like I would feel comfortable if I didn't feel like I'd accomplished something. And if I, I'm not quite sure what that is yet and mm. I need to work that out. But I think if I, if I felt like, you know, I got to like, it, it, in the next 10 to 15 years, if I really haven't got and delivered something that I feel has created worth or value I'll be really I'd be really scared of that if I don't and that that kind of now it's now day four mid 30s you know that is creeping up faster than I thought and actually in the next 10 to 15 years I need to do an awful lot before I really think you uh, ain't got to worry about what we'll be doing well yeah, yeah we're on the right path but yeah. you know perspective on on where I am now in my age you know that's quite scary now so actually living in you in being mid-30s and thinking I'd told myself years ago by the time you're 30 you'll have it sorted, sorted out. you'll well, be, yeah. you'll be yeah. sorted so the fear probably now is doubled because it's more like you're not there and yet you've now made yourself you know twice as much uh, uh, pressure because yeah. you what you, sure. you're gonna have to put on but do you not, can you like, reframe that fear into excitement that now things are going to go quicker possibly if yeah. you actually move yeah, yeah 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 I guess so I guess the fear should be less around yeah the uh, the, the previous like it hasn't happened yet what's going to happen and it should be more into the so I think well, the fear next. in itself like when we get it and we're scared of a situation or we're worried about something or we're anxious about something it's actually the same feeling as excitement yeah and people like reframing that into excited about how quickly things are about to just can take off. Yeah. Yeah. And I also thought as well, this was a couple of years ago, it was like if if I was scared of the success, I was also possibly worry more scared of like I was like self sabotaging myself mm -hmm. because I was worried or scared of like, well, if I get there, what do I do next? Like, what am I supposed to do next? Because if I got all these things that I wanted to do, like, where what would what would you do next? See, that's why it's like a not an unknown thing. So just, that's what that's all about love and the process, isn't yeah. it? That's why I think, like, for me personally, although I have certain things I want and stuff like that, I just really love the fucking hustle, man. I love I love a deal. Like, do you know what I mean? I, th I think still got that inner Del boy. In I've you. still got it, mate. And, and I think David Goggins' book and that that sort of I'm sure it's in his, and he's like. There shouldn't be a goal. Doesn't believe in yeah. goals. It's about, for example, it's not I want to deadlift 100k. I want to increase my deadlift every month. That that's the goal. So there's no. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like he articulates it much better than I. But like that that's the thing. And and I think, even a year now, probably a year ago, I would have sat here and said I want a fucking six bedroom big Georgian style new build house with a four cart garage and a Ferrari and a Bentley and like and now Matt like, I'm not, I don't really care for all that but like so it's not so much having like goals it's just about just constantly being better in 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 quotes mm -hmm. like yeah. improving ourselves from a business perspective anyway like, I don't have like it's not like I want a million quid or I don't have a certain thing it's just like let's let's do better than we did last time and, and just constantly look at it like that there's something that um, I talk about in my book actually there's a whole chapter on 
uh, climbing Everest, moving mountains. Nice little so, uh, plug there. Yeah, I like it, man. What's your book called? On? Well, yeah, just show us the front cover. Just got uh, free here. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, they were just That's sitting here right, casually. Yeah. Sitting it's right there. next to Ross Edgeworth's book. There, you read that one. Good. Yes. Which one? Yeah. The Art of Resilience. Well, both of them. Uh, the first one I've read. Yeah, the, the next one. Book in the world. Well. Is it really? Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, some but guy. When we talk about goals and stuff, there and pushing yourself, like the amount that he's pushed himself, mate. But um, animal. And that link, like he done like the rope climb of Everest climbed up and down yeah. after the height of Everest but I talk about Everest that people say like their goal is to climb Everest and like, I'm going to do it on my 47th birthday climbing season is in May and my dad died when he was 47 I'm going to climb Everest on that time on that date and people's goal is to get to the top but is it or is it to get to the top and back down safely mm. because so many deaths happen coming down because yeah. I've actually hit their goal and then you think what is next mm. well shit I have to now get down pretty safely and it's having that journey, like go up there and back down. Mm. And then what happens afterwards, like people doing it over and over again, and there's other peaks to climb as well. Mm. And just because like you may have your main goal, there's then things afterwards. Uh, just because Everest is the tallest thing, then there's plenty of other mountains which are actually gonna be more technically, yeah. technically more K- difficult. K2, I think is Yeah, there, there's so many more difficult like, mountains yeah. out there. So there's gonna be other goals when we get to them. Sure. And we don't necessarily know about them goals yet. Yeah, yeah. I um I was listening to a, a, a YouTube video the other day. He's talking about Everest because this came up. And this is completely tangent, if I'm honest. And he was saying he was like, so we measure we measure. Um, this is all about like perspective and references. So he said we measure like the height of Everest from what? And someone says from sea level. He's like, but what is sea level? Mm. And they're like, well, the level. Where is it? Like, like, what does that mean to you? Like, you, yeah. you, we've got no actual concept of where sea level is, do we? And he was like, we all say this thing, but actually, we ain't got a fucking clue. Like, no, no one can. It's actually got higher. Visualize like, over that. The years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Well, I guess sea levels are rising, so so it should get lower. Let's get, yeah. It'll but Everest has got higher. I but Everest has got higher. Yeah. Because of the yeah. tectonics well, and probably stuff. Probably something yeah. like that. Do you know what I was going to ask you, actually? We were talking about age, being mm. like 30-odd. I'm going to have to chop the fan back on. What, um, like, like, I've got this belief that I've got another 100 years to live. I generally think that I'm going to live till I'm 130. Not if you keep having fries. Oh, come on, down. come on. Yeah, fair, <laughs> fair play. No, I, th- I think... A vegan, the healthy yeah, vegan. Yeah, chips are vegan, mate, and potato. <laughs> no, I'm not the best <laughs> vegan, I would admit. Now, do you know what? The only thing is chocolate. I have chocolate bars sometimes, but other than that, I'm after your fries, ch- fries are vegan. Yeah, but I'm just talking about the health side. <sighs> yeah, fair point. <laughs> just because you're vegan, don't mean you're healthy. It's very, very true, actually. <laughs> very yeah, true. very true. But yeah, I, I generally believe with with advancements in technology, medicine to a degree, but more so like nanotechnology and stuff. I, I, I generally believe I'm gonna be. I've got another hundred years in me, so that time scale of like achieving things. To me, I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool, like, whatever. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm 50 and we reach where we want it, if I'm 50 and I've got the house I want, my underground fucking sustainable house, and like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? If I've yeah. got that when I'm 50, I'm like, oh, cool, I can, I can now, I've got another 50, 60, 70 years of being able to enjoy my life, opposed to saying, what well, if I do it when I'm 30, I've then got 50 years to enjoy my life. Do you know? What yeah, I, mean? I guess. Yeah, I suppose that's right. I guess the thing, I kind of, I guess the environment that you've got around you. Will always will change, won't it? That will always yeah, change. Yeah. So whilst I'm 30 and you know families are here and that's cool and I want to enjoy that, there's goals for that time or that phase. And in 50 years' time, I hope we're all still alive. And it probably is another. You know, there, there is going to be all this. No, people keep not wearing masks. Well, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> or keep all people keep wearing masks. <laughs> Oh, let's Which not get into that. Uh, <laughs> Which one is it? Yeah. yeah, people's immune systems dying. But yeah, um, no, yeah, I suppose yeah. It'll be, it'll be built however anybody wants it. Yeah. But I, I do agree that the the, the average lifespan is going to be. It's going to go up. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's yeah. definitely going to go up. And, yeah. and also, like yeah, we're in our thirties, but you look at so many people, and like you see Gary Vaynerchuk's story of like he was still working for his dad's wine company when he was like yeah. 33, 34. Yeah. And a decade, I think he's like forty-five now or something. Yeah. And look at him. look at what has happened in a decade, and like even with me, when I think about my last bodybuilding show was in two thousand and twelve, and I was like, screw going back to fitness industry and work. So were you a PT through that as well, or what were you doing? I was a PT until two thousand and ten. 
so that was when I worked at a sport event and it's crazy because I'm now back training there as, as David Lloyd's but I actually like one shift there I was so lonely getting paid like 12 and a half grand or 12 grand for working 40 50 hour weeks then my PT on top of it so it was like 60 70 hour weeks I actually went home and took like three or four packs of paracetamol and I had, I had to go down A&E with my mum and I was like why the fuck would you do that like, mm. like you're living with your mum why would you even do that to the, your mum or to anyone really and then you think that was a lonely time and I think that was 10 years ago yeah um, well 2009 I think that was so 10 11 years ago but leaving Aviva um, I shouldn't really say names but fuck it everyone like have you guys worked for Aviva yeah man I've never yeah. done, I've done 18 have months you? there no I oh, didn't in the Aviva you're one of the rare ones one of the, yeah, um, everyone who knows like, had a job at Aviva yeah. really. um, working there and leaving there having anxiety attacks massive like anxiety attacks and stuff and I talk about that um, I've got a blog post like, about four hours having a heart attack so left insurance in uh, personal training and doing it on the side in like 2010 three years nearly four years in Aviva 2014 I went full self-employed but there was like end of 2013 was like I think even then was that was when I had three months off sick of losing secondments for offshoring and budget cuts and then going back to that yeah that seven years of where I am now imagine what was possible in another seven years yeah and you wouldn't have even thought that then when I was doing PT and I think my first package uh, was like fifteen pounds a month and hundred pounds up front, and I remember getting enough money in one month to pay for holiday to Egypt, and I was like, "This is fucking nuts." Yeah. And I think it was like fourteen hundred quid or the same amount, and then I left Aviva. You think what has actually happened in that time? Yeah. Like in the mad. last seven years, like you guys, you say you've only joined forces a year. Yeah, we looked. Yeah. We looked the other day, didn't we? It's literally it's like a year about now, I think. Yeah. But yeah. And what has happened in that time, even with four months of slowed business and changes in the market oh yeah I think um, I mean I don't know how deep you want to go but like go for it in regards to like I just said about paracetamol like, yeah well, over that's what made me think and I was like do you know what let's, let's fucking go there man yeah. like, for, so, I don't think I've said that on a podcast before but really a bit it is what it is like, yeah why, why have you ashamed of, of like, your past mate do you know it what makes the, you who you are. the amount of people so we we set up we should probably start it again we set up bro society didn't we yeah. um, me and Louis and we'd done that just men coming to talk and on the first one there was like someone said about they felt suicidal and then someone else was like guys put your hand up if you ever like really genuinely thought about it yeah everyone not one person it's like and and I I, I had a bit of a funny time um like, like the, over the last year or so before that um, and, and I tell you one thing that brought that on for me was inactivity actually and and like my 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 own personal so I've always I've always had this thing and and I, I, I think I can trace it back to be honest and again this is something psychedelics has helped with is that when I was younger I was quite good at football and all through you football, Norwich, I played, so you were like quite. Come on. Oh no, yeah, I played for Norwich when you I weren't quite lead for at like. All. I was like, nah, Lee Carry. I, I was there about eight years, I think, from when I was like seven. They yeah. start. I went to Paris when I was eight with Norwich, and then they let me go at fourteen, and then Lee stayed on up to YTS. Um, and all through that time, there was a few guys there, like, oh, Remy, Remy, Remy. So it, it, it's just instilled in you, and and then once you're out of that, like I went to Cambridge for a year. I played for Norfolk and stuff, but like. I was never good enough to do anything or I didn't put enough effort in either, I, I don't think, but I always felt like I was going to be someone and then to have that dropped, then I, I've always felt like I should be someone. So I've always felt the need to buy things and act in a way that makes me appear like I am someone. So that's why like when I was like 21, I had a fucking gold Rolex on, do you know what I mean? And, like, and, and, and it's stuff like that. And looking back now, I understand all that. But then I've always wanted to be active to be able to become that person. And now I'm sitting here now and I'm, I sit in a completely different place in myself from my confidence perspective is that I don't need that shit. Like I know without sounding egoic, I'm a charismatic guy. Like, it, do you know what I mean? I don't need a gold watch to walk in a room and be that guy. No. Not in every fucking room. Like, do you know what I mean? But like on, on the whole, like, a lot of people know who I am and stuff like that. But like last year or a few years ago, we finished doing a house. And, and I was just at a point where like, I was just on my own, I was just, well, I was with, with my partner at the time and we were doing the house, but I weren't like socializing, no one knew what I was doing and the house had finished and, and I was just not doing anything and I was just plastering and, and I swear to God, 
one day I just cried at work. One Sunday I cried. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like I can't kid myself anymore. Like this is not who I'm supposed to be. But before that, like from that moment onwards, it felt right. Like do you know what I mean? And, and yeah. my, it felt so much better. But up until then, I was just forever feeling like I'm not who I should be and and I felt so depressed and horrible and it's like what's the fucking point man? Do you feel like, like the control weren't in your hands it was in someone else's I worked for myself but I just felt I just felt like the, the, the this and and do you know what like again I, I, I find it so strange how we how we're like born and money just rules everything and no matter how much we want to talk about it and how much how hippie you want to be or how spit money rules fucking everything mm-hmm. and and it was like I can't do anything I want to do because of money and like plastering's not going to get me to where I want to be so then that made me even more de- I was just like constantly depressed then I started looking into like the financial systems <laughs> and the governments and then you're like fuck me it's even worse and then you and then you feel even it. yeah you feel even less in control because you're like well I can't, I can't just roll I can't, I can't I overturn the government yeah. like yeah I can't tell the bank to fuck up like so but yeah, I, I did. I weren't. I weren't confident in myself. I weren't who I wanted to be for one reason or another. And like, and now over the last year, it so it sounds obvious, and it also said. But I think now I just I don't really give a fuck anymore. I, I, I just do whatever I want. And yeah, there'll be mistake, and I'm and I'm happy making mistakes because so many people. If you have an idea or whatever, that'll be well. Well, this could go wrong, or oh, you don't know about this, or oh, that might happen. It's like I get it. But to me, that's just thinking too logically. And if you want to be, I mean, although I am an extremely logical thinker from most perspectives, but from business and personal, I was like, it's like, well, then you'll never do anything. Mm. And so since since getting rid of all that, I, I do what I want. Like, I thought I want more tattoos. So I got more tattoos and then I felt better. So I, I, that's what I wanted. That's who I want to be. Like, and but I was I was in a pretty shitty place to be honest with you. I, w- I wouldn't say it, like I didn't I didn't actually attempt anything or anything. But I was just like, man, what's the fucking point of living? Yeah. Like, what is the point? Like on a on a cosmic scale, on a universal fucking scale, what is the point of anything we do? Like if I want to build sustainable houses, oh yeah, that's a really good thing to do. But like really, on on the grand scheme of even our planet and then our solar system, and what is the point of that? And I just started getting into that, and it was like. Oh mate, it's a, it's a funny place to be in, and it's kind of a, a negative feedback loop as well. At what, what point do you actually feel like you get the control back? Because so, like looking at my coping mechanism since I done bodybuilding has been the gym. Mm-hmm. So I remember that Sunday, this chair was over there, and I was sitting there the Sunday after lockdown, crying my eyes out. What the fuck am I going to do? Because we're not going to have the gym for three weeks. Yeah, and I like, managed to get through. Do home workouts, hated them. And then how long did that go on? And then I was Fuck. like, yeah, that was a long three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then like, I'm like, I don't want to push myself to do these home workouts. And I've always been like, if you don't like working out that way, don't do it. Yeah. So I had my bike set up there, going out on my bike, uh, bike on my turbo. But if it was that time when it was I was competing in bodybuilding, hadn't done the work on my mind and stuff like that, I'm actually worried about what would have happened over really? the last four months. And I know like a couple of people who actually, or know of a couple of people that had actually committed suicide in the bodybuilding world and whether I don't know him well enough to know it's the Olympics can you imagine being yeah, the athlete imagine training, training for four years your whole life and then maybe if it, what if that was your last Olympics as well yeah, yeah, well, yeah. not necessarily first when you might have other opportunities but your last one yeah. and imagine that's your identity that's your being and that's yeah, your you all your the sponsors are coming yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah fuck yeah you can't, I can't imagine like what that must be for certain people like, I mean Copenhagen do you, do you know what I I've not really thought about it actually until you know said it. And I, and I well, think it's an interesting way to put it. Yeah. Because it's kind of, you didn't think actually, what is my game? Yeah. And am I putting that up as something? Or it, 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 I, I think my so activity much. is one, to be honest. Like, I'm, if that I, was when you slowed down, you noticed more. More things were thrown up because like, there was so much going on, like my wife moving out in January and all that sort of stuff, and then being thrown back in together with lockdown because we went to see each other, and then that ain't working, and what is going on? Yeah. And you think, well, the way I would cope with this is in the gym. And I remember speaking to my mentor like in February time, I think it was. I said, look, I am going to go and train every day, but I'm not going to train hard. It's going to be up and down on that. Yeah. We're going to go easy on the body, but if you don't, if I don't go to the gym, then it's a coping mechanism so it's some form of exercise 
and like I don't see that as an addiction I see it as a way of getting through different things because an addiction to me is you go and you're going balls to the wall with it every day yeah and it's having control when you're in there but the blessing for it and it's fine and so this is that mentality we're talking about is that you know what ever since 2012 or 2011 when I sold my music stuff I'm going to buy it all again I'm going to start doing it and like now we look at what's happening with that and looking at a business through that ideas and just that was my flow state again yeah and like, there you are it's been absolutely ridiculous when you look at the actual coping mechanism that goes remember that ski trip I got like so on the ski trip after the first day of skiing I stopped skiing because I couldn't stop because <laughs> you can't the guy broke his stop. leg yeah guy his leg. snapped his leg yeah one. and I yeah, was like, like let let stop. <laughs> wow. I can't stop wow so I was trying to do a snow plow like, and then they took the barrier down as yeah. well there was like this just, yeah, yeah. That was so where he got his leg stuck didn't he yeah and, and oh. I ended up like yeah, I'm going to sit in the cafe and write lyrics for the whole week. And I yeah. got some award for writing. They gave that like dummy awards yeah. for everyone. Fair play. And I think like, even Spirit back awards. then, like that's writing lyrics and everything. Music has always been the thing that got me through. Yeah. Like there's some form of mechanism, a coping mechanism. But then if it's, it's a funny balance, isn't it? Like, like I generally think for me, it probably is activity. Like I yeah. like, I like, I like coming up with ideas. I don't, it, this probably sounds worse than how I mean it. Right. But like, I'm very open for businesses to fail. I'll do all I can. Like I think we, like I, I'm extremely confident that I put a lot of work into our company. Like we both do. Like, but at the same time, I'm not scared of things failing. Mm. But I like the activity. So for me, it's like like the th- like we're now going into business doing that, and we've got a couple other bits that we're doing. It's like that's what I like, and that's my coping mechanism. And it doesn't give me enough time to sit there and think about how shitty the world is, really. And, and I still do believe that to a degree, yeah. that society and humanity, have, we've created this beast. And I, and I don't, I, I wake up and I was having a discussion the other day, and like, um, you'll know, like, it was with Rosie we were talking about. Uh, and, yeah. Um, we were saying about going down into not necessarily believing the government. So, so you're like, being a rem then. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> Yeah, but um, no, I think I think for me, yeah, that's it. But yeah, that, that drive as well, like, um, and I don't know whether you've noticed it, but even like, I'm going into very, very much smaller business than you guys have gotten, like, with you, and I'm like, fuck, like that work rate there, I I got to put in so much work on stuff that I'm, I don't know much about, just what, to keep on, on, what on track. You mean with me, yeah, like I want to get there and actually pull my weight with that. How do you, like, because your skills are slightly different with that. How do you stay like, on track with that, knowing that you both pull and wait? It's hard to even put in a, a, a kind of um, scale, I suppose, because you move fast and it's very difficult to... to so don't up. try and keep up, just do what you I know think you're so, in. yeah. And I think your character is to do stuff spontaneously and you can't stifle that. You have to. You, I've got to let you go and do what you want to do, you know. And there are numerous times where I'm like, "What the fuck am I doing? I'm not doing anything." Or I may have to keep my little set of jobs rolling so that I can keep things happening on my, you know, with 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 a little. Um, you know, I, I work on other kind of client projects that have my kind of income, I suppose, over that side, and our development stuff can just grow. And you know, just doing a day or a couple of days on that, you know that's hard to then come back and be like right get my head back in the development world and what we're up to because it creates a kind of I need to catch up because there's so much can happen in a, in a short space of time um, I think yeah it, it's it's not a there's no competition and that's going back to what we spoke about earlier I don't feel there's competition between what we are doing I think it's when it needs to be done it will get done I enjoy it it's not like I. It's not like I never resent Tom. Like, it, like if I worked ele- eleven hours one day, like I enjoy it. But also, I feel like that sometimes as well. So like, I'm building a house at the minute for us. For me, it's relatively easy. Like, I'm enjoying it. I'm on top of it. It's going pretty well from all feedback we've been getting. It's going fast, and I'm thinking this is all I'm doing. Here's Tom pulling in all the money, looking at the other, the next deal, and doing this and sorting the legals out. And here I am, just building a little house. Like, so I think it's all so about there's perspective some form of as well. Syndrome in there as well. Oh, a million percent, bro, a million percent. Um, but but I try and to start with, I had this thing, and I was like, who the fuck am I? We shouldn't be doing this. We're borrowing like a, 
astronomical sum of money that could pay off two mortgages probably like do you know what I mean it's like who, the, who are we but actually I try and use that now to start with it was tough to balance when now it's like using that and I try and put that into our brand as being authentic and also I think like humility is a power because most people are egoic and they want to be smart so if I if we ask a developer how they do something they want to tell us so they feel smart yeah. so we're just like we're fairly humble we're like we're open to ask people and just sponge off people do you know what I mean yeah. so I think it's using that imposter syndrome in that perspective because a lot of you know our industry is just everybody's the next hottest thing or, or there's somebody who'll tell you how they can do something better than you so if you are if you show any vulnerability that's almost used against you, or well, I found it especially. Like, you but know. who's using it against you? Is it your competitors? Yeah. What yeah. about your? We, what do your clients see though? Do they see a human being that they can actually speak to? Well, that's that's something that we, that's one something I had to check over, check with, with myself. Yeah, and it's probably it's only since we've now really been starting to kind of put ourselves out there as more who we are rather than it just being uh, a company with. You know, these are our values and this is a great whiteboard full of like sayings and stuff but actually getting to know us is probably a big part of our business and yeah 100% I probably would have kept that in and thought can't show that can't give that away to this particular person because they're going to know this one this one this one and this one and Norfolk's not a big place so if they know that Tom can't do that or he's he's asking for help on that then he's not a, he's not the guy that we want to be working with that's yeah that's key really that you know we've kind of i think we've overcome that and we've kind of just put ourselves in a different league because if you want to work with us you will because you either believe that we're good enough to do to do what we can do or we'll find a way to do it it's, it's the bottom line really um and i think if you want to be in business they're the sort of people you want to be in business with not the people, yeah, the people that yeah, keep coming back not the well. people who know everything yeah. and, and i've yeah. i've had experiences with other you know joint venture partners and other other things that haven't gone well in the property world and in, in a couple of others and you know it's it's the same thing you know they they will bullshit and, and just be good salesmen or you know they'll tell you everything that they want you to hear but their actions will be completely different and I don't think that either of us have you know if it's come down to how we you know our track record of we're doing two at the moment but there isn't anything in there where I think where something's happened where we haven't had to get in and just deal with it yeah whether it be finance whether it be you know construction yeah, or anything. or actually whether it just be helping someone out like the the people that we've had work with us some of the tradesmen you know at the right time when things have gone wrong and we're like right we need all hands on deck they've come and backed us as well which I think is sort of a reflection in how we try to have treated you know them yeah. so they, they're kind of putting it back to us well, I think that's have you, is something have you ever sort of struggled with like imposter syndrome and stuff like that or yeah a lot yeah. I mean there's I've probably got a lot of the insecurities around all, a lot of those things whether it's you know I don't my you know my ego or those things I push down quite a lot my self talk's probably not the greatest you know I don't put myself as, as a sort of being the person who's, who can bring the kind of confidence to the room and, and, and you know, close on stuff. But I know I can deliver, but it's 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 the challenge between, yeah, there's always somebody who's going to be a bit better than me and that's it. I don't want to ruffle those feathers. And, and this is what we were saying earlier. You know, I've been always a kind of very relaxed person and somebody who's who, who wants to cooperate. So, you know, if you start, if I start to go, I'm going to put myself out there as being somebody... You know, to take notice of, then I'm going to be stealing somebody else's attention, and I need to be ready for that. I.e., I need to be prepared that I'm going to be that guy. Do you know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. That, that someone can go. Why do we listen to you? And you, that's the that's the change up. But in, and if it, if I can believe that actually I am that right person, and I can, I'm a developer, or I'm an investor, or I know what I'm doing, and I've done it before. Then I need to be talking more about it rather than being quite insular about it and being like, yeah. ah, you know, I won't say too much. I'll just kind of scoot by and go under the radar. That'll be fine. Tough balance, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's a tough balance between like ego and confidence and certain things that we we all need to tell ourselves. But actually, in a way, they're like it's it's almost like 
not it's, I hate this expression to, I'm, I'll try and think of another one but like not loving yourself but like to enjoy yourself why do you hate that expression I don't know it just always feels really cheesy like but if you of, can't love yourself how can anyone love you <sighs> The word love always just feels so cheesy. It's thrown around. So live, laugh, love on the wall. It's all thrown around cheesy. But like to enjoy yourself, to enjoy the sleeve you're in and who you are as a person is, is, is egoic. It's, do you know what I mean? But so it, it's almost looked upon as arrogant if you sit there and go, no, do you know what? Actually, I, I've done this. I'm good at this. Or, yeah. no, I look good. Or mm. I'm fit or whatever. That's classed as arrogant in society, isn't it? And it, and it so it's a funny... But it's strange how that is always the approach most people take. Yeah. You know, it's always the, you know, you're the hero or the villain or you're the yeah. arrogant. Or Do you know like, the people that seem to be the villains? Like, you see someone driving a Ferrari down the street and someone goes past and like, dick. Why? Because they were, they, <laughs> they, it's got they, a Ferrari. If, if their parents, Obviously. If their parents are giving them the money to get a Ferrari, yeah. well, still, good for them. Yeah. Like, their parents have probably worked hard to be able to provide for yeah. their kids with that. Or they've worked their ass off to get it. I just don't know if we're building humans to be thinking like that anymore. I just don't, you know, it just doesn't happen that way, does it? Everybody's kind of, if you've got something or you've achieved something, you've probably been given it or you shouldn't have had it because you've it's that fucked someone over. It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> straight away, yeah, exactly. straight away. It's because I ain't got it. You probably because I'm, I'm not doing it. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. do you know what? I thought about building a house once. Yeah, yeah. These fucking pricks out there yeah. doing it. It's, it's like what? what? Like falls over. I, I remember. It's like, it's, um, it's like what? I was part of a bodybuilding forum. That was when I was training people. And it was like twenty five pounds an hour or something, or thirty pounds an hour, and they got everything else included in that. And then like I switched up and said that I'm charging two hundred fifty pounds, and like it's a lot more than that now. And that was per month, and that this is what they get, no calls or anything. And they said. What are you doing for that? You're giving them a blowjob at the same time. Like, what? Because you don't. And then someone just came back at me who was in the entrepreneurial world and just backed me up. Like, just because you don't believe you can charge that much or you're worth that. Yeah. And then, like, you think. Doesn't like, mean someone now else. Now it's like four figures a month to work with me on a full one to one. Yeah. And I know that people are able to pay that and believe that it's worth that. Yeah. But those people there, they're still going to be stuck in that mindset that they can't get past that because they don't work. Um, yeah, working. I think I'm, I'm a big believer in and going back to like the running side of it is, is that like, I think when we tell ourselves automatically that something's hard or uh, if you put something on a pedestal, like, for example, I would probably need a couple hundred grand to build my house. Don't got the mo- I don't have the money at all. I've got nothing to start. Right. But I'm not looking at it going, oh, my fucking God, I need 200. How am I going to how am I going to do that? It's going to take me 20 years to save that. It's like. All right, I need to end that. I don't know. Yeah. I'll, I'll figure out a couple of years. We'll, we'll probably have it. Like, I don't know. But so marathon. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Where some people are going, I need six months to train for a marathon because I need to train this, 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 this. So automatically you're telling yourself something's too hard and all un- unachievable. And it's the same principle. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't charge someone 250 quid a month. All right. You can't then. You've already told yourself that. It's so. self-worth, isn't it? At yeah. The end of the yeah, day, yeah. 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 Knowing what your time is worth. And you were saying about um, with the imposter syndrome. Who have you got to be to actually be that person that has got that confidence? What have you got to achieve before that happens? I don't happens? know. I honestly think that there's quite a big change in what I'm thinking and the discovery of how to approach things in the last 12 months. Did mushrooms help that? They may have. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Tom had a, had a had a experience together? Yeah. Sorry, go on. Well, yeah, partly partly due to that. But I so think, I'm going to need some then. I think, I think it wouldn't hurt anyone really, to be fair, but... Um, it it feels like I I kind of have thought a lot in the in the long sp- period of like a ten year plan you know looking back and we've and maybe because we've been doing more content it's made me think a lot more about what the you know what experience have you got where have you come from what's it happened what are you all about where are the what are our values what do we want what and in ten years you kind of think fuck you know lots happened lots changed and and am I'm a different person but now it's the change of like. How, how can I think smart or how do I be more confident about stuff or how can I position what I want to do in a, in a way that you know is going to be beneficial for the next 10 years and the 10 years after that and then and after that and without thinking I need you you need to think differently or I need to be a different person on or, or think about things differently or approach things differently I've got to explore that more and more and and this for me in these environments you know even doing podcasts and things like that you know I kind of listen to podcasts I've always you know I guess I've always been a consumer mm-hmm. but I'm trying to think about 
to be a an operator yeah, yeah. Or an, yeah. and, and a kind of owner of that con you know that side of it. Um, but the but it's that battle with well how much do I value what I've actually got to say and is it good enough that other people would want to hear it or can I create something that somebody is interested in and that's you know it's just it's just I've got to go through this this sort of discovery really of figuring that out and it's not natural for me to think like that which is I think why it just takes me longer to think of it. So I think social media I like the expression about using social media don't let it use you mm. So it's taken some aspects from it and using them as a positive. So from that perspective, like I was exactly the same. I was like, who the fuck got to listen to me? But actually, from since we've been putting ourselves out there, I've really understood how much, how many people like them. We're gonna, I'm gonna completely make up numbers now. But obviously, there might be five developers here, and we're number six. They might not care that much about what we're saying, but there might be five thousand people yeah. who want to be these five people who do yeah. care what we're yeah. saying. So it's like, it gives use. Yeah. I've used social media. To then under to give us value yeah. and go actually no we we do know a little bit like we we probably undersell ourselves I think that's the, that's a big thing is not yeah not putting our value really on I think we no. all we all underestimate how much our content actually gets to people and actually they listen to yeah we don't even know like I was um this guy called Leon Nogafitis I don't know if you've seen Kindness Diaries on Netflix if you haven't mm. you'll love it he goes around the world on the kindness of others him and his sidecar from like nineteen seventy Kindness One. Cool. And he's like, then gives back to people. He'll go to, I, I think it was like India and built some schools or something or built a house for some woman in the Philippines, yeah. and all this sort of stuff. But I was training a client. He was over in LA area. And I thought, well, um, it was just outside LA. I'm going to have a day in LA. I'm going to do the Hollywood like trek and all that sort of stuff, go down Venice Beach. And um, Leon actually lives in Santa Monica. So I was going to walk from Venice Beach to Santa Monica. And I thought, you know what? What's the harm in sending him a message and saying, look, your stuff's inspired me. Can I take you for some lunch so we can have a good chat? Yeah. And uh, he accepted, which is kind of cool. Uh, uh, he's not necessarily a celebrity as that you'd think of like an A-list celebrity, but he's on Netflix and got three or four books. And we're just chatting there and he said, look, your stuff is probably actually invited. I don't want to impact a million people. Yeah. And this was 2017. So before the book came out and all that sort of stuff and before... Uh, even started working with a lot of the clients I work with now. And he said that if, say I worked with you two, and then you got knowledge and then what, that impacted 10 other people, they mm. impacted, like, it soon just like that filters expand. down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this expands like the snowball effect, just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it doesn't even have to be a client that has actually worked with me. It could be like, yeah. we've just chatted and said something. Or Mate, when you say your body is your business, yeah. when you said that, I was like, true. fuck, yeah. man. Like, yeah. and like, it was, like, even with that sort of stuff, without that content, I wouldn't have got to Baby Bathwater, which was the Mastermind event then, when I said that. And you think of there's people that are in Baby Bathwater Mastermind, that you think it's like Dave Asprey's or Tim Ferriss's and people like that, I believe yeah. they're still active members. And you're socialising with, like, not those people, but people around, around that, in that social circle. And if they've got hold of something, then they spread it to someone. Uh, we're not talking about millions, we're talking about tens, hundred millions and that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we underestimate the power of social media. Uh, to the point, I was in LA 2015. Um, this wasn't it was me paying to go to an event there and I was working with some guys in complete human performance. So it was mainly athletes there. And someone asked for a picture with me. So I was coaching, he said, are you the British guy off um, complete human performance? That was surreal as fuck. Yeah, and, yeah, like, like what the fuck? <laughs> and even for like That's people amazing. asking for a signed copy of your book, like, why am I going to sign? Yeah, what do you want? Why do you want my autograph? For? <laughs> well, it's not even an autograph; it's a like, signature. You must have been you like, were like yes, cool, your ego, cool, yeah. your ego, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yes, I'll sign it's it. Cool. How many copies do you want? Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> Does anyone but, else want a picture? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's cool, but yeah. at what point does it actually feel real? Yeah, um, and I think like. I was I going at the start of that? Yeah, like we underestimate how Social much media. our content actually spreads to people. Yeah. So like my Twitter has got thirty five thousand followers. It's dead now. But when I was working with triathletes and endurance athletes, like I was getting thousands of impressions when I put a tweet out. And you think if that goes to someone, then a retweet and then something goes viral, it's massively Doesn't powerful. Matter. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like, even like with the podcast before, we've had some really cool people. Like it's still the same people that are subscribed that have been built on it. Like even though there's been a break, it's gone from beyond the champion show to athlete upgrade, and now it's OJ Health Radio. Yeah. But it's picked up people in the past, so like this could probably go out to someone 
that hasn't listened to a show for God knows how long, they might be in a different mindset. Yeah, and take something looking for property, it. and then they start going into like shit. Yeah, like, who better knows? follow these guys. Yeah, it's causality, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's mad how the universe and works. And people man. come in at the right times as well. Like, there's a reason that we're all connected again. Do you um, believe? Do you believe in a lot of stuff like that? Like, I know, you know, I talk about a lot. Of I do. Yeah. Stuff. What are your yeah. thoughts? It's like I believe in it a lot. It's interesting because I haven't spoke to you for ages, yeah. and I've seen your even though we've been on social media, yeah, and I've seen your videos and things, and I've always looked at them, and they've always come across. I was like, wow, like Ollie's really like as a as, how you speak in your videos, like how you present stuff. I was like, wow, like you. Yeah, because you knew me as that shy guy at school. I was going to say, mate. Yeah. How you were at school, and I'm still shy. Like so, and that was like my kind of view on the outside looking in was wow, like what a guy now he's getting into all this stuff and he's now really building himself a you know a brand and he's he's not afraid of getting out there and putting himself in front of the camera or on on, on you know microphone or anything so i kind of was like oh he's got you know and then when you said oh, i've been speaking to ollie and it didn't click for ages i was like all right ollie and you're like yeah from school i'm like all right yeah and then, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, and then like, Ah, there ah, it is, yeah. Ollie. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, right. Cool, fine, get it. And then I was like, right, that makes sense. And then I could see why you guys would get on. But then I didn't know you'd known each other for as long as you had and had all that history. So the stuff that we talk about and the stuff that you say, oh, I could speak to Ollie about any of this, I'm like, I can see those patterns coming through. So I, would, I wouldn't even doubt that there would be a, a reason why we're here other than that we're, we're all sort of moving in that headspace, yeah, in right that time, mind yeah. space, yeah. And, and the the probably the challenges and things that you're facing in your business, like, same thing has happened and will happen with ours, and it's... Yeah, just because property and health or music, it doesn't mean, like, same. it's building businesses. Yeah. Communicating with people, at the end of the day, yeah. property is a people business. Yeah. Fundamentally, it is, whether it's our side where we, I mean, from front to back, it's you know, raising money and selling to someone on the end, that whole, it's just a load of people in the way and you're educating people on how to be better and healthier and, you know, and to learn how how they can, you know, up their performance at the end of the day. I think it's so important. I think for me personally, look, where you're selling, like, it's just like who you associate with, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, and, and this is so, I'm sure I can talk about this. We've got the arena that, we'll, that we're doing um, and, and, that, and that's, going to be although it's just going to have a little cafe it's going to be a, the hustle gym in it and like it's very much organized and it's a collaborative thing of just like people like us similar mindset into business into branding building that sort of thing and, and it is all of us is very much like we want that to be a hub of that sort of people let's attract more let's get mm. more guys like us all connecting with each other and doing another cool stuff this business that bit be, let, let's yeah. all just elevate each other and I think, for me... Do you me, think this is the future of how this stuff works? I mean, you've spent a lot of time in the States. Like, do you see the kind of businesses doing this more? Or, like, collaborating? collaborating? I think, like, when I look at... So, with Baby Bathwater, that's a mastermind, and it's... The cool thing there is that it is, like, really high-end mastermind, and guys have to be on, like, six figures at least mm. a year to go there. Um, and they vet every single person. Mm. And you can't sell if you want to like pitch in there like if you're doing a presentation you can't sell it's not a credit card at the back of the room job which is so cool so so all relaxed um, and there was plenty of drugs and alcohol going on as well that was on a private island but that's what all rich people do yeah like, was it you that said that about um, what's frowned upon yeah yeah what's, so I saw a thing the other day it was like what's, what's frowned upon um, when you're poor but celebrated when you're rich and it was like tax evasion hard drugs alcohol and speaking two languages yeah. so I was like <laughs> yes so true. Yeah. <laughs> like, these guys there like they weren't looking down on anyone because they may be earning six rather than seven or eight figures but all the businesses were linked together and their sole purpose what they wanted to do and working with the clients that I worked with being business owners whether it's male or female they want to help you as well and the amount of times a client has then said take this course I've made and then listen to this section or why don't you do this? Or so offered me a free service. It's not as in a pity party or anything. It's that we can all drive each other forward. Yeah. And they know that you're going to utilize that that information mm-hmm. as well. And but people are making that information because they want people to utilize it, mm-hmm. not because they're wanting just to make money out of it. Yeah. Um, and it's absolutely crazy the people are connected with because of it. And also as well, 
how they stick up for you. So I done a talk for the Yes Group, and someone said, "This is like January last year, I think it was." And then someone said, "Why do I listen to someone that's out of shape talk about health?" Uh, well, I'm not in the shape that I was in when I was competing in bodybuilding. And then this guy, Ron Lynch, and Ron, if you're watching, awesome guy, he just literally went off on one. And this is a guy that's done like directing films in Hollywood and Samsung campaigns and God knows how many advertising campaigns. Just went off on one, just sticking up for you. And you think, these are guys that people pay thousands to actually chat to and they've got your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's part of it as well, knowing that there are people you can talk to and like with the pro society and all that sort of stuff and getting people together. Mm. There's people you can just chat to, and they might not know the answer, but you get to some sort of answer as a result. But even being able to sit here and talk about things like imposter syndrome and, and, and those insecurities around trying to grow a business and stuff, which we all have, but are not really talked about, obviously, on social media or anything. Social it's media not is a, that, like, they're in a book place. to it's deal not with a, your no, yeah. shortcomings yeah. Is for business. Like, where is that? Imposter yeah. syndrome for dummies. Yeah. Mate, do you know what? So, let's say... I, me and Louis knew who each other were for years, right? Never really sort of spoke. Last year, after Ayahuasca, Selma Watch said, right, I'm going to put... He was then crowdfunding for Erpigam. I said, right, I'm messaging him, I'm going to put some money in. Like, So we met up and we just like hit it off straight away. And it was like, I've never been able to speak to anyone about, for example, not knowing exactly what you're going to do. Like, I've always, or so many people around you might tell you that you need to learn everything there is to learn about property development before you start a property yeah. development company. So it's like, we expect to be an expert to go into business. We're actually, the more, the more we're doing now, the more people I get to speak to in business, like, mate, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing when I first started. I'm, I'm still making bits up as I go along. I'm still learning because we're growing all the time. Like, we're learning all the time because we're growing. Like, if you're not learning, if you're not at a point where you don't know what you're doing, you're not pushing yourself to the boundaries enough. So it was like, oh yeah, fuck, this guy's got no gonna have two restaurants and he didn't know what he was doing and, and look at that. So mm. why can't why can't we do it? Do you know what I mean? So it's just being able to be around business people yeah. and share those type of insecurities and mindset issues and shit like that. I think it's a really. different sort of group because there's like different groups around here. We'll both know what we're talking about. Uh, like, I've probably been part of almost all of them. Yeah, probably that like you pay and then you have to get points to recommend people, all that sort of stuff. Oh, BNI. I wasn't going to say the name, but you know. <laughs> what? That's just name yeah, what a, what a load of crap. But like, no, I've been invited for that. that. And you some, some people that. are getting like, I won't edit it. Um, some people are going to be getting some business and they love going to them. But I wouldn't ever feel comfortable standing up and asking for help like I would in a group like, nah. like just chatting here. And I think that's the thing that holds those sorts yeah. of things back in mind and I've done a talk for them as well um, in lockdown I've done a Zoom chat for them as well and it was just it didn't feel like the same sort of connection okay it was online but I've yeah. done group yeah, things course. online before and it just didn't feel the same sort of connection that you would get like, do you know what I think the main problem with that is money's first yeah so if you genuinely want to help other businesses, I'll tell you about work or I'll tell spread your name whether you're in BNI or not. But now nah, that's not like that. No. It's like, oh, have you paid your £800 a year? Oh, no, then I can't recommend you because I don't know. And it's like... I don't know who you are. Yeah, you it's didn't like... didn't any business last week. What, I like, can't give flip you a... that on its head. If I run BNI, I'd be going around telling people, give people work and then tell them to come because this is where that work stems from. It's, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Give someone something first, then get them in. So add the value. Add like, like jab, value, jab, value, jab, value. jab, right hook. Yeah, yeah. Like, just yeah, add yeah. as much value as give you them, can yeah, all the time. Give them what you can yeah. And like that—that that was the cool thing about the. I'm not a paying mastermind member. It was just going to the events. But but like, the mastermind for the year was like twenty grand. And uh, but people will get way more than that back in value when they look at the connections. Yeah. And yeah. like it's it's been you know the people are only going to recommend people in there everyone's been vetted and you're going to trust those people from the conversations they've had but when I look at there's going to be other ones other than BNI as well but I look at there as people are recommending them because they're in there not that they know them no oh there's someone in my chapter that does this or does that uh, oh great so no. do you know what their work's actually like yeah no but they're in there uh, no oh, but great. Yeah. yeah I sit next and we're to recommending this amount yeah. of, of well, and it's not to slag are there going to be so many different places like that um, and I really don't like talking badly about them. That's my personal experience of being in those. 
it's a funny it's a funny sort of headspace to be in when it comes to opinions of certain things like there's a lot of this in the property sort of world and it's like part of you goes i don't want to be negative i don't want to talk badly but then part of me goes well no if i think someone's a shyster and i be- i genuinely in my heart believe that they're just out to take money from people mm. i think it's my duty to say, actually, I don't really believe in what these guys do. It feels like they're just after your money. They're not actually looking to help businesses. And I'm pretty comfortable in doing that. Like, if I, like, there's certain property education companies, and, I, and I've been very explicit online yep. about my thoughts about them, because I genuinely feel, and no, I genuinely know that they're just out to take your money. They're not there to help. So, yeah, I don't mind. But I did struggle with that a little bit, being like, oh, I'm just being negative. I'm projecting negative energy. I'm going to get that back. But you have to flip it and go, well, for me, it was It's just like, from your own experience as well. Maybe yeah. that's a different way yeah. of looking at it. I was lucky. I got my money back, but... Cause I, I didn't kicked, actually. I went to I, someone else. Because I kicked off. I'm not on b and I for it. I, I paid for a property thing, mate. And that's awful. We, but I guess, ironically, it's I'll kind of led me where we are now, in a you, way. You but learn from every single thing you've been through. Though, 100%. Like, mistakes. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, it's not failures, they're all just lessons, man. Absolutely. But it's in, it, valuable in that the industry we're in has all of that in it. You know, the same as health and fitness. It's yeah, there's going to be the people yeah. selling you know, you know, Juice oh, Plus mate, and yeah. Herbalife and stuff, and they're fully qualified. Do you know what? This, is, this might sound a bit right. bad, right? But like, do you, know, do you ever see people like selling Herbalife? And like, can you imagine being in that headspace where you think you're an entrepreneur? Yeah, like I'm a business owner, entrepreneur. Yeah, they've been life. brainwashed into it. Yeah, so I it's know. not them. It's not them. hundred percent, hundred percent. But imagine being brought to go. You're a business owner. You're an entrepreneur. You're selling herbal life, man. You're like, a franchisee. <laughs> it's, it's a yeah, bit like being yeah. the prime minister of the UK and thinking you're helping the, the country. Oh, moment. mate. <laughs> Are we off politics? Are we don't. <laughs> oh, Wait, we're going back to her. Thank you, oh, Matt. Do you know what I was thinking? What I was then thinking, I was then going to ask you about mushrooms. Like we've talked about it a little bit, haven't we? Because you had. That was your first experience with mushrooms, and basically we'd done it at mine. You've been to my plot, um, my plot. I find land ownership a strange concept, so I always say you own, my. You own the you land. Own the land. Own the land. What a strange you own the planet concept. Earth. Own. Like it's been there for it's billions of years. It'll be there for billions of years afterwards. Yeah, I own. Like I find yeah, it strange. We're, but we're going to own own the the clamping bit there. But anyway, like um, yeah. So uh, at the architect who's helped me out, who. Again, talk about causality, how that came about with this architect. But anyway, he's into mushrooms as well. Um, so yeah, we done them together, didn't we? And we sort of didn't really talk about it. And we had a little chat about two weeks afterwards. And I can't remember what Tom said. And he said something. And I was like, mate, that's mushroom talk. It was like really deep and profound. It was talking about thinking before thinking and like all these things. And I was like, that's what mushroom does. But we hadn't really sort of... So I'd be interested to sort of see if you've had any... I, I don't know, sometimes... You can expect, like, no one's expecting like, a life change and revolution, but at the same time, I think you can sometimes go, well, actually, what about, yeah, I don't know. Probably more, I think the exposure to thinking differently whilst you're in the, you know, you're in the, the, realm. the moment, the realm, <laughs> <laughs> is, a, is a, it wasn't an uncomfortable feeling, but it was a feeling that, it, it was a you would you know you would just think a lot more and I don't take a lot of time to think so having more time to think in that one little bubble of a moment has kind of just put uh, you know it's like that it stands out so when there are moments of when I do start to think it's probably like back of the bus going 27 hours for a ski trip listening to 50 cent on repeat whenever I hear that song it puts you back there so whenever I probably pause to have to try and think like I was think about this like I think I do get more influence from from exposure to that yeah one moment so it it, ha- it has had an effect and it probably will continue to do so um, but I do I think I personally needed to have a bit of a shake up anyway I feel like I was a bit too rigid and I was a bit I'm still a little bit too safe and kind of I was in my own little lane really and I wasn't kind of I don't think I was experimenting and kind of pushing the boundaries enough so it needed to happen and I think it, it made it made a wave that, that I'm still riding probably and I think it will continue to do so because yes yeah, it's it's um, it goes deep. It goes it's, it's, it's deep. A funny, it's it a funny deep. thing. Do you know, talking about like thinking? So I, 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 to be honest, I think a lot. I do. I, I, you I, say a, stuff to me about thinking about this, and I'm like, that ain't a 
Ten normal thorn, thing. It's you must. Have, I I'm like he must have spent all afternoon thinking. No, I don't. I just. But I think. But I, it's I having think, the time on your own. Yeah, I don't even think it's that though. Like sometimes I'll just be driving, and I like some of these thoughts might sound like they're deeper, but sometimes they just it's pop just, into my head, and I just go, "Well, what about that?" And I, and I just have a little bit of a thought. But like so, so what, but I do think I think a lot. Yeah. About quite what a lot of people would class as deep things yeah. but that trip yeah specifically it, it was it was beautiful for me because so imagine this is quite hard to explain and it and it might feel uncomfortable to some I get that but like it was as if I didn't exist but my my brain and my thoughts did but without any of me so I was sitting there, I kind of walked off, didn't I? And I sat over here and Tom wrote like, oh, Remy's sitting in his living room. So that, that was as if he was looking at me there. And I was like laying down, right? And I had this like grass thing and I was like spinning it in my finger. And I swear to God, that was all I was thinking about. And then I was like, oh, this is amazing. I can just think. And then I just went off of thinking about like, um, again, like this work like land ownership. Like, why do we think we own land? Where does the planet come from? Why do we, uh, and like, why do we build houses? Like I started going into architecture, like why we build things like this and why we build things like that. And just, just really, really being able to think without any like Remy, tea, work, business, food, trash. like nothing, just purely think. And for me, that was such an enjoyable experience because I really like thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think for me that leads to critical thinking. Yeah. So it's like, how far do you take that thinking? I I, I, I take it quite far. I, yeah. I I think and and do you know what? From my own insecurity, like being around people, I find that I I feel like I'm an intense person because I want to talk about deeper things like that. Like I don't find many conversations that stimulating. So I feel like I'm quite boring, and like I'm, I'm I can be intense. I know what intense. you mean by that, though, because there's times where, yeah, you you end up just chatting and chewing the fat, and, all, yeah. and then when something gets brought up, that then just draws everybody in somewhere where they're not comfortable. But actually, it's like a bunch of lads maybe just starting to just push out and be like, "Well, oh, I was a bit scared about this," one. you know. And then that then it's like, right, we're now this is starting to become a very interesting experience. Yeah. And, but yeah, I, 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 I do take it quite far. I do like thinking about fucking our existence, the universe, I history, got society. To like, too many people just accept things rather than asking why. And I think we've seen that over the last <laughs> couple of months. I was going to say, need we a better example? <laughs> exactly. Um, what do you mean? <laughs> like, there, there, you there's, this animal, mean? there's this animal called a sheep. <laughs> right. Right. So it's just following along with things yeah like rather than asking like a toddler asking why have you had during the pandemic being a health you know and a a kind of person of kind of notoriety around that do you get people go what should I do like have you had that people ask you and kind of go to you for what should we do I was asked like more than housing I've done a talk on improving your immune function yeah and Apart from that, it was me putting out content on immune function, mm-hmm. but not to the level I would think, which would have been like would have been much more. People would have been much more aware of it if the government had been saying, "Focus on your health." <laughs> focus on your health. What a stupid focus, idea! Like, yeah, like <laughs> that's, what can you do? Like at the end of the day, your health is your responsibility, no one else's. Yeah, and. The, like the I government mean, the, just everyone outsources like the, you know your health is just like oh, I've got the NHS don't worry about it yeah like, I think that's, that's one of the way. reasons I'm focused like more on the US because yeah. they have to pay a shitload yeah, yeah, more yeah. Like, and I want to work with more people in the UK but it's just like people think the doctor's responsibility or your health is a doctor's responsibility mm-hmm. no they're there to advise you mm-hmm. and they're there when things up. go wrong yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's absolutely crazy when we actually look like taking responsibility. Like we're where we are right now because of us. Mm-hmm. And like we may have had advice from people, like people may have given us money at certain points or given us a gift of something, but we still had to act on what actions we took with that money, with that For gift, sure. and taking responsibility. 
not enough people in my mind take responsibility. They want to push it on to someone else. Like marriage is breaking down, like relationships breaking down. That's my responsibility. Getting to like ten grand a month and thinking, yeah, that's when I'm going to get to my, get buy my car, order my car, and then four clients go on the day I actually um, pick up the car. So I'm like, fuck, I'm back down to six grand a month. Um, all that stuff is my First responsibility. First world problems there. Yeah, mate. I know. And, but then, <laughs> no, but then that, that, that spiral down as into, like, I'm losing more, self-sabotage yeah, yeah. and self-sabotage because it was yeah. that negative feedback loop, which then put me into debt and all that sort of stuff, which then you're working up mm-hmm. to do. But all of that is because of me, not because of anyone else doing it. Yeah. And it's taking that responsibility. You yeah, you can't. Yeah. What is it? They say everyone's a self-made man, only the successful ones admit it. Yeah. yeah. And, and like yeah I'm absolutely awesome at what I do but even that is because of me yeah, like, yeah and getting that knowledge and everything you had to know where to go and you guys connecting like taking responsibility of like you said like about yeah you got your money back from that course but you've actually learned from the course as well experience not the course yeah 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 I, the words. yeah I was gonna say there's no way you you don't, don't, you there's don't no way you put I get that second <laughs> edited they'll be doing this guy you, you don't want to put uh, after you've had a refund yeah I did learn from that yeah the best thing I could have done was sign up and get a refund because yeah. I saw where, how bad it was and then yeah I did but then it. now you're aware of that and you haven't like you're actually putting that content yourself you're armed and taking responsibility for where you're at yeah yeah it's like I say it's that causality again everything's led up to what we're doing now and that's been part of the journey I can't but I'm not going to sit there and let someone take two and a half grand from me like that. That's 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 completely immoral. So, but yeah, but that that then feeds into what we're doing. Yeah, so I definitely learned from the experience for sure. Just just to wrap up with everything, because it's like we've been chatting for a while, and I need to piss at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> um, oh, mate. <laughs> but what is your vision in five years and ten years for your business? <clears throat> Both working together, still growing. You go first. Five years, I think, will achieve will achieve exposure locally to what I think we both want. We both want to get our kind of brand in and around Norfolk, and I think in the short term, five years, we'll have an awful lot of that. I think we'll get a lot of opportunities in building and developing. I think we'll have some other kind of quirky things that I don't even know what I can think of what they are at the minute but I know that Norfolk's got a diverse selection of buildings and some of them will probably come our way so I think we'll grow a very nice business here and then I think in five to ten it will be about it'll be building outside of that I think it'll be UK and overseas I was going to ask is it more than Norfolk yours like, like say a little bit personally personally I think I'm going to try in the next five years to just to I'm open minded but I need to be uh, I, I'm trying to learn to be a lot more um, flexible with you know things coming and going not be so like possession based and, and have kind of um, be quite obsessive about I've got to get this done it has, it has to happen like if, I, if it doesn't work I need to let it go and, and you know and let things come and go as they, as they are um, and just learn to be better in terms of developing myself every day I can I think if I can build that up, I'll be more confident. I'll be more, um, you know, useful for for us to grow really in the business. I really do. Nice. Interesting you say that. So, like from a personal perspective, it feels like I want to be a bit more like you, and you want to probably yeah, be a bit more like me. I like so. I know, I know personally over the next five years, I I, I do I'm need. Glad you said that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what did you say? I couldn't hear that. <laughs> The ego, the ego, <laughs> the, ego the ego. I haven't got enough tattoos, mate. I can't do it. Can't. Basically, in five years, you won't have a shitload of tattoos. <laughs> I'll, I'll be covered in tattoos, yeah. No, I think from a from a personal and business is that to get to where we want to get to, which will be in five years, I've got no doubt about that, we said we want multiple sites, around five sites on the go. Yeah. We'll get there in five years. But link and business and personal, I need to be more like Tom in the sense of I need to... We're, we're going to be dealing with six, arguably seven figures by that point. Yeah. No, seven, eight figures, eight figures by figures, that yeah. point. So I, I, every, at the minute, everything's up here. And like Tom says to me, he's like, oh, mate, if I could just download your brain onto spreadsheets, and that's what I need to get better at. So I, I, that's from a personal perspective as well as other things. But five years, 
business wise, yeah, we'll reach that point. Ten years business wise, I'm the same. Yeah, let's let's see what else we can do. Start investing around the world. There's other because they, there's, there's so many different things. All those things that we've talked about. If the government stifles it here, then we'll go find it elsewhere. Yeah. So that's that's where I think. But also personally, in five years, really, I mean, to be honest, I'm not the same person I was eighteen months ago. So I, I also mm-hmm. struggle to sit here and say what do I want in five years because. Mm-hmm. Who knows? But um, I, I want to, I want to get my house built, um, and not have a mortgage on it. It's going to be a super sustainable house. Try not to use any concrete. It's going to be off grid as much as possible. But I want to try and use that as a proof of concept for our business to make it look like a normal nice house, but actually have all the features of a hippie house built from mud, sticks, natural materials. Um, and then leading on again, this is all quite interlinked actually. So ten years. That should then be able to then filter into our business. We'll be at a point where we can afford to take a bit more risk yeah. and go down that route. Um, something that we sort of both were passionate about. Yeah. So yeah, that's sweet. That's yeah. a good plan. Good plan. Some what about you? What about you? It'd be uh, investing in loads more businesses with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and having some mushrooms by the sound of it yes, probably mate. other stuff oh mate yeah we'll do it when we get the dome up and running um, we'll do some great t- content there and I think we could maybe have a little mini us four us three maybe get Louis um, and have a little business mushroom Brandon be fucking awesome doing different shit I, yeah, it, it, really... I think it's like we get locked into a certain lane that like I'm always going to be doing health stuff and helping people with their health and eventually it'll be like having coaches working for me that are following my methodology and, mm-hmm. um, which has been a scary thing to even think of because is that your plan then for the five years yeah, I mean there's got to be a point when it's not just one to one whether it's mm-hmm. doing group based work and stuff so it t- allows me to work with more people mm-hmm. but also it's opened me up time wise to the point of um, being able to work on other businesses like music side of things I want to be like creating music specifically for businesses and for influencers and have a name like I have in the health world in that mm. uh, which I've got no doubt now I'm back in it for like it's only been three months where I've been back making music but the level of standard that I've been doing like yeah my mastering is going to be better but I'm learning that yeah I thought it was going to take a lot longer to get back but I'm actually better than when I'll I make was that there. one you then tune yeah. come in um, and it's surprising me with that so then there's also, what about if I start making podcasts for people and edit them and put that all out there? And there's so many different business ideas and how do I get all this in? So I think the key thing for me is that my main focus being on the health, purely because of my personal story, without losing the quality there is how can I build up these other businesses and mm. invest in other businesses um, to make them, like OJ is my brand, but then having all these other side of things of keeping that same brand quality. So I think that's going to be like, key is keeping that quality up yeah so uh yes yeah, so we'll see what happens over the next seeing what's happened over the last Mate, let's see what happened in six months let alone yeah, yeah. five years right Definitely. like so where can the guys get in touch with you if they, they've got a bit of land on like i mean mars on mars oh let's not oh mate i could talk three hours about that um oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um i like to talk man um we'll do another podcast we'll do another we'll one. do the next one do it next end of the month. year we'll have some big news no, we'll, we'll do year. one next month and just, in, in, in the oh dome. yeah we're in the dome um yeah yeah well i'm pretty active on at instagram mainly wolf of renovations um we don't actually have a business account on instagram do we, we haven't it's no pretty much the, through me the really. facebook page in there We've Darwin got, and wolf yeah you can find it Darwin and wolf website, website. yeah yeah um yeah anyone want to reach out have a chat advice anything yeah be good to, uh again broaden your horizons yeah, talk to yeah. If, you, if you've yeah. like resonated with some of the stuff like we've yeah. not just spoke about we've spoke about all sorts oh, of yeah, shit that was a good chat that's a good yeah. chat yeah um, really enjoyed that yeah books and kind of yeah, so useful things book. to read and stuff like that yeah like yeah. recommendations <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the body upgrades. <laughs> no, that's good man cheers, oh, yeah. cheers i appreciate you guys joining me cheers sweet